questions. So, Mataji, kindly accept our humble obeisances on behalf of everybody who have joined this group and are about to join. Uh, Mataji, we are reading the Srimad Bhagavatam. We are on Canto 1, Chapter 17. Chapter 17 is Punishment and Reward of Kali. And today our text is Text 16. So I hand over to you. Thank you, Mataji. So I uh, thank you for giving me the chance to do this service. And um, I'm indebted to my gurus um, um, and all of you, all the devotees, um, for giving me the chance to um, talk about um, Srimad Bhagavatam. Um, and if uh, I make any mistakes, please forgive me. Om Akyana Timirandya Sakyana Jana Shalakaya Chakshu Militam Yena Tashmai Sri Guru Venama Sri Chaitanya Mano Vishtam Stapitam Yena Brutale Shantswayam Rupa Katamayam Dadati Swapadam Pikam Vandeaham Sri Guru Sri Yuta Padakamanam Sri Guru and Vaishnavamscha Sri Rupam Sakrajatam Sakana Ragnatan Vitam Tam Sajivam Satvaitam Savatutam Parijana Saitam Krishna Chaitam Devam, Shiratha, Krishna Padana, Sagana, Lalita, Shri Vishaka, Vitamscha. He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Ratha Kanta Namastite Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Rathe Vrindavaneshwari Vishavani Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Mancha Kalpata Rupyashja Kripa Sindhu Pai Vacha Patita Nam Pavane Pyo Vaishna Vipyo Namo Namaha Jaisi Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Sri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namishkritam Naran Chaiva Narutam Devim Saraswati Vyasim Tato Jaramuti Rayat Nashta Prashya Bhatreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttam Ashloke Bhakti Bhavati Naishtaki So we are reading from Srimad Bhagavatam 1.17.16 Ratna hi para mutar maha, swatar mastanu palanam, shasatunyan yata shastram, ana padi upatyaniha. Translation by Srila Prabhupada, Sri Prabhupada ki jet. The supreme duty of the ruling king is to give all protection to law-abiding persons and to chastise those who stray from the ordinances of the scriptures in ordinary times when there is no emergency. Puppet, in the scriptures, there is mention of upper dharma or occupational duty at times of extraordinary happenings. It is said that sometimes the great sage Vishwamitra had to live on the flesh of dogs in some extraordinary dangerous position. In cases of emergency, one may be allowed to live on the flesh of animals of all description, but that does not mean that there should be regular slaughterhouses to feed the animal eaters and that this system should be encouraged by the state. No one should try to live on flesh in ordinary times simply for the sake of the palate. If anyone does so, the king or the executive head should punish him for gross enjoyment. There are regular scriptural, scriptural injunction for different persons engaged in different occupational duties, and one who follows them is called swadharmasta or faithful in one's prescribed duties. In the Bhagavad Gita 18.48, it is advised that one should not give up his occupational prescribed duties, even if they are not always flawless. Such swadharma might be violated in cases of emergency if one is forced by circumstances, but they cannot be violated in ordinary times. The state executive head 
is to see that such swadharma is not changed by the follower, whatever it may be, and he should give all protection to the follower of swadharma. The violator is subject to punishment in terms of the Shastra, and the duty of the king is to see that everyone strictly follows this occupational duty as prescribed in the scripture. Okay. Thank you, Matthew. Um, okay, so. Um, just um, to start with the discussion, um, a quick recap of what uh, we have been seeing um, in the last few verses. So in the previous chapter, we saw how um, uh, there was the conversation. We, we saw how Mother Earth was grieving. Um, Dharma was um, asking Mother Earth, and then Dharma was also lamenting because Dharma uh, was only on, um, is now standing um, only on one leg. Um, and over the uh, the yugas, uh, Tama had uh, lost um, um, three of his legs. The Tama lost. Um, does anyone remember what Tama lost after Satya Yuga? Austerity. Yes. Dharma lost cleanliness after Dwapa Yuga, and Dharma lost mercy and kindness after, um, uh, sorry, Dharma lost cleanliness after Treta Yuga, and then Dharma lost um, mercy and kindness after Dwapa Yuga, and Dharma is only standing on one leg, that is truthfulness in um, Kali Yuga. So um, we've been um, we've been seeing this discussion going on, and both um, Dharma in the form uh, of a bull and mother earth in the form of a cow uh, in conversation with each other and um and lamenting and uh the the fact that the lord has left uh, this material world and they are they are um um in huge separation uh, and they can't bear that because it has brought in so much of um uh, so so many things which are quite adverse to dharma um, and then we see as they were conversing, Parikshit Maharaj um, comes there uh, by the, uh, he, he, he came to the banks of the Saraswati. And as he came to the banks of Saraswati, there Parikshit Maharaj sees a Shudra, uh, um, a person of low, low caste, uh, um, dressed as a king, as Parikshit Maharaj was the king. But this person was a Shudra, dressed as a king, uh, and beating. Um, a bull uh, and the cow, so beating Tarma and beating Mother Earth. And Parikshit Maharaj was um, furious to see that um, because, you know, um, um, it is it's, it to, to, for such a thing to happen um, in his kingdom where everything was perfect and the subjects were looked after. Um, that is that is absolutely unpardonable. And no one up until now in his kingdom had suffered due to royal negligence. So Parikshit Maharaj was really, really aggrieved that, you know, someone in, in his kingdom was uh, beating the bull and the cow, Tama and Mother Earth, so badly. And he confronts um, um, uh, the Shudra and was almost about to kill the Shudra uh, because uh, the Shudra was insulting, not just insulting, but really violating Tarma and violating Mother Earth. Um, and, um, and that is what brings us also into um, this verse where uh, we see why Parikshit Maharaj really was so angry with this with this person who was dressed as a king. And we see in this purport why, what is the dharma of a king and how a king should be. And not only that, um, the, the, he was dressed as a king and he was he was beating dharma. And we see why dharma um, is so important, and um, the verse also talks about uh, Swadharma and Apadharma. So these are some of the things we um, will be looking into in the verse today. Okay, so Dharma, that's a big name. We, we always talk about Dharma. Uh, why is Dharma important? 
we see um, we see the fact that dharma is so important is over and over told by us in the shastras by the acharyas but most importantly the lord says that to us Okay, so the Bhagavad Gita starts with the first word as, you know, after Dhritarashtra Uvacha, Dhritarashtra says, the first word of Bhagavad Gita starts with Tarma Shetra Kurukshetra Samaveta Yujutsava, Mamaka Pandavashtraiva, Kima Kurvata Sanjaya. So Dhritarashtra um, asks Sanjaya, Tarma Shetra Kurukshetra, what is happening in, in the Tarma Shetra, which is Kurukshetra. So we see the importance of dharma is established right at the beginning okay so krishna when he in the bhagavad gita that is his book that's his saying he establishes the fact that the most important thing in the material world to survive for these fallen souls who are here the jivas who are now you know who are separated from the lord the most important thing is dharma and then um, we again see um, um, in Chaitanya Lila, uh, we see once when uh, Sanatan Goswami was um, was um, going from um, going to meet uh, Mahaprabhu. Um, he was traveling from uh, Vrindavan to Jagannath Puri, and on his way, he had to pass through jungles and really, really uh, dirty water. As a result, by the time he reached Jagannath Puri, um, his body was covered with, uh, you know, uh, pusses, and you know, it, it wasn't really bad. It was scratched, and he had some kind of skin disease. And he he thought to himself that, um, you know, I cannot go like this in front of the Lord. Um, the Lord always embraces me because the Lord is merciful, uh, but I cannot take this body to the Lord. Um, um, so I'm just going to um, give up my body. Um, but because it is not right, and Shastra says that it is not, this body is, um, you know, it, it's, it's the temple where the Lord lives. So I cannot just take my life but what I can do is I can you know give up my life for the Lord so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just be in front of the big chariot and let the chariot be over me so that you know it takes away my life from me as well but that would be giving up my life under the feet lotus feet of the Lord so this is what he was contemplating um and then but, but of course the lord mahaprabhu knows it all um so in the crowd he could see he, he could feel that there was sanatan goswami standing afar not coming near him and he asked jagannath uh, mishra to just to to bring um uh, sorry Jag, Jag, i forget jagannath mishra was his um uh, father um he asked one of his um and devotees to bring Sanatan um, Goswami to him. Um, and when Sanatan Goswami comes to uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, Mahaprabhu just embraces him. This is the Lord again embracing him. Um, and then he chastises Sanatan Goswami saying that, why were you even thinking of doing such a thing, of committing, you know, of giving up your life? You do know, you realize the fact that this is your, uh, this is not your body and the body has been given to you by, by me. But what is more important is your soul. You are not the body, you are the soul. But what is important is that by giving up your body, you would not have fulfilled your dharma of spreading Krishna consciousness, of spreading, you know, the Harinam, of spreading my, my words. So by doing, by giving up your, uh, by giving up your life, you would have curbed um, the, the opportunity of being able to spread Krishna consciousness amongst people. And that is the main duty in Kali Yuga, to spread Krishna consciousness, to, to let people uh, listen to the Harinam. So here we see the Lord again telling, um, establishing as to why it is so important to keep to the Dharma, okay, over anything else.
So, um, so, so we see we've been reading through all these verses as to why, you know, why Dharma is now on uh, its last leg, but we now realize that over and over in the Shastra, why it is being told to us why Dharma is important, and no better person there to tell us than the Lord Himself in the different yugas. Um, so even now. So we talk about Tama. So how do we define Tama? So if we ask, people talk about Tama all the time, but what really is Tama? How do we define Tama? So if I ask this as a question to, um, to all, how would you define Tama? Yeah. Uh, yes, Prabhuji. Yeah. I'll say dharma is a uh, like uh, in simple words religion, uh, but uh, if I will say it's like the constitution for mankind on how we should live. Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you. It is yes. It is um, uh, to a large extent. Yes. Anybody else? So Tama, yes, it is, it is, um, so we say Tama and um, Tama is used in many ways, okay? Tama is used in many ways. So we can say, as Prabhuji said, Tama is religion. So you say, you'd say, you know, what is your Tama? Are you a Hindu? Are you a Muslim? Are you a Christian? Uh, do you belong to any other um, sect, caste? Uh, well, what is your Tama? Yes, Tama is used in that way. Um, we also see um, that, you know, many a times, sorry, my battery is going on. <laughs> Um, we, Mataji, is it a duty? Our duty. Yes, Mataji, thank you very much. Tarma is also our duty. So our duty, it is your Tarma to do this. It is your Tarma to look after your children. It is your Tarma to be kind to people. So that is your duty. Yes, that is also another meaning of Tarma. But Tarma overall, the overarching meaning of Tarma is... Um, righteousness not just right not right so we hear the word you know tama and adharma and the verse also talks about upper tama dharma is right but not just right dharma is righteousness so it is the quality of being morally right, not just right, but being morally right or have being justifiable for your action morally. Okay. So we see Tama is um, described, um, you know, um, in Vedic texts as laws that bring order to a universe that would otherwise be in chaos. Okay. It could be a law, it could be a custom, um, it could be anything, but Tama is not just as simple as just, you know, it, it's, it's, it's right to do this, so it's Tarmic to do this, and it's wrong to do that, it's a Dharma. No, Tarma is everything, Tarma is what is right, but what is morally right. As soon as an action becomes morally right, and how do we judge? what is morally right and what is morally wrong, we go back to the Shastras. What has been laid down by the Lord is what is right. What is it? What is the right in the, in the spiritual world? And what the Lord has very mercifully and very kindly given to us through Lord Brahma um, and through the various other, you know, uh, gurus um, and acharyas, uh, the, what is right, the laws that should be uh, followed in the material world, which is otherwise full of maya. And uh, if, if the people in this world uh, um, do not follow the rules laid down by the Vedas, then um, maya is going to engulf the human beings. And that is what happens as we come into Kali Yuga or as we are into Kali Yuga. And um, so um, we see in the Sati Yuga, people were more Tarmic. But um, as the Tarma loses each of its legs throughout the ages, Tarma becomes more and more dilute. 
And so those moral um, uh, injunctions or moral laws or moral rights and wrongs, um, that dharma becomes really, really um, dilute and becomes flexible in the hands of people who do not know, who uses the word dharma in a very callous manner. Okay, but dharma is not to be used in a matter of fact way and a callous way. Dharma is what is laid down, and dharma cannot be changed by circumstances or place or time. It is what has been laid down. Okay, so dharma is a combination of morally right, the righteousness rather than just right. It is also, as Prabhuji and Mataji said, the duty to do right the duty to do morally right. Um, and it is also the religion, the right religion to follow. And we will come to what is the right religion? Is there is because religion sometimes divides people. But when we talk about dharma, we are talking about the eternal religion. And what is the eternal religion? What is the Sanskrit word for eternal? Sanatan. So when we say dharma and religion, we are talking about sanatan dharma, okay, and not just everyday religion. So it is the eternal religion which cannot be changed by time, place, or circumstance. And when we follow that eternal religion correctly, and we do our duties correctly, according to that eternal religion, we are following the path of dharma. And that is what is what dharma is. Yes, does it make sense? Yeah. So uh, life without dharma, it can be you know a, a life without oxygen. You know we cannot live a life without dharma. In our original state of um, ma life, you know when we were in our in the spiritual world, where uh, where where our original abode is, that is where we all come from. Over there. Uh, the spirit souls, we are all very soft-hearted. We are quite soft-hearted because we are all parts and parcels of the Lord. So um, because we all come from the Lord, um, we, we are soft-hearted. Um, but just as we see in water, in the example of water, the the natural state of water is the liquid form. But sometimes we'll see that water sol solidifies into ice and then sometimes it evaporates into gas. Similarly, throughout the ages, by being contaminated by Maya, we see these um, um, the, these individual souls um, forgetting how to live a life of dharma and these souls, individual souls, they become hard hearted, they lose that softness. So we see, um, we see uh, a Jitrashtra, okay, we would think that, you know, Jitrashtra would be dharmic. But we see how he had become, a, 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 he had followed, you know, the path of a dharma. We see Kaikei, who was, who, you know, Ram, Lord Ram, loved Mother Kaikei more than he loved his own mother. And Mother Kaikei loved Lord Ram more than he, she loved her own son. But yet we see Mother Kaikei becoming very hard hearted. So sometimes, um, um, again, um, you know, due to the will of the Lord, we see things do happen and individual souls, um, whether it's based on their qualities, their gunas or their circumstances or their karmas, they become, they change the path of, they, they, they derail from their path of dharma and they become adharmic. And in this verse, we see the shudra by beating dharma, there is no better and more visual a picture than the shudra in the dressed up as a king beating dharma himself. Okay, so when we love God, we love all. But when we don't, we, when we don't love God, when we stray from dharma, we stray away from the path of God, we divide the world. Okay, and we make allies and we make enemies. And that is how the different religions start. But we are all under the same umbrella of eternal dharma, which is sanatan dharma, okay? the eternal way to live the, in the right way. Okay, so um, 
there are many, many types. There are quite a few types of Dharma, actually. We wouldn't have time to go into all the different types of Dharma today. Um, uh, the verse talks about two different types of Dharma. I might be able to add a sentence or two on, on some of the other Dharmas, but I'll name some of the main types of Dharma. So Dharma, as we have seen, it is nothing but the rules or the, the law laid down by God. But what are the Lord? The Lord is uh, the Lord uh, loves us. So when you have um, a father who's a loving father in the Bhagavad Gita, he says, I'm the seed giving, giving father to all. So when Krishna is a loving father, he cannot be very strict. OK, the Lord is Pakt Vatsal. He, he, he loves to be defeated by his devotees. Uh, and we see that in so many times, in so many ways. Yes, um, he, we see how you know, he, he actually loved being tied up by Mother Yashoda, although he made her run a bit and endeavor a bit and before showing mercy. But he loved it. He loved being tied up by his mother. He loved when he was he's, he was told off by his mother for eating dirt. So we see so many times he actually loves it when he's actually um, told off or defeated or, you know, um, uh, he had a friend, Madhumanga. Do, do you know about Madhumanga? one of his friends and Madhumanga uh, thought, you know, everybody loves Krishna. Um, why, um, you know, why can't I be loved as much as uh, Krishna? Uh, what does Krishna do? Let me see. Okay, Krishna wears yellow. Let me wear yellow um, dirty. Uh, Krishna wears a peacock feather. Let me wear a peacock feather. So he dressed up like that one day. In the meantime, in Mathura, Kamsa was advising his demons uh, how would you recognize Krishna? Okay, he's the person who wears a yellow dhoti. He's the person who wears, uh, uh, you know, has a peacock feather. And then the demon, they would come, they came and they were um, trying to, you know, they found Madhumangal, but Krishna was there to save Madhumangal, he understood. But he saved Madhumangal and, you know, made Madhumangal the hero uh, because Krishna, you know, in the Krishna book, we see he killed so many demons, but there were many other mini demons you know, apart from the big stories. So these kinds of things, he was dealing with this every single day, fighting demons, uh, of which are the anarthas, the different anarthas. Um, and we see he actually makes his devotees the, the heroes, and he wants to stay back. He made, he he became the charioteer of Arjun, and he made Arjun uh, do the fighting. So the Lord cannot have strict laws, but... He uh, so we see when we talk about dharma and 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 we see uh, the the different types of dharma coming from him. We have to understand that the root, the root is the Lord, and it is the love of God. So dharma, the start point of dharma is the love of God. It is not dharma should not be um, is not an interchangeable word with strict laws. We have to understand that when we talk about Tama, the root of Tama is the love of God, because that is where it comes from. And then, because it uh, um, the material world has to be maintained, um, Krishna, uh, so uh, different types of tamas um, have been established or uh, are in the Vedic texts, and some of them are Varna, Varna Tama, Ashram Tama, you have Samanya Tama. Guna Tama, Vyashti Tama, uh, Rashtra Tama, Nimitta Tama, Nitya Tama, Stri Tama, Samashti Tama, Apad Tama, Apad Tama is mentioned in the um, in the text today. Um, so um, some of these dharmas we have come across already. So we've come across the Varnashram system so many times in in uh, in the previous verses as we've um, uh, gone through Bhagavad Gita and so far in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Um, and it is uh, dividing the society um, according to different varnas. Um, and what are the different varnas? Um, Brahman, Kshatriya. Vaishya, Sandha, Shudras, yes. So 
And what is um, what is um, varna? You where you divide the society and you give specific duty to different people because as we talked about in the last class when we all came from the spiritual world we all wanted to lord over each other and when there is that feeling of controlling one another or wanting to control there cannot be a society with with everybody doing everything all at the same time equally there has to be higher and lower or rather there has to be different so when the Lord created the Varna Dharma, he did not create to, uh, you know, put one Varna down or the other Varna, Varna up, but he gave specific duty to the different Varnas to be able to maintain the uh, material life in balance. And um, and similarly, we see in, in this case, we see the, um, the king has been given a specific duty, which we, we will talk about in very, very shortly. Um, and then we see um, in the very, very quickly, we see um, uh, um, everybody in, in the uh, Varnashan Dharma should know their profession and occupation, just as a king should. And just as been, you know, uh, uh, as Parikshit Maharaj is stressing, no one, no one, the king is the represent, the king is ideally the representative of the of God himself. So what the king's duty is, is to um, protect his subjects, not just protect his subjects, but ensure that his subjects were getting the right um, or being treated in the right way as is being laid down or has been laid down in the in the um, scriptures. Um, so the mind, uh, if if a person, especially a king, uh, knows uh, what their their duty is and does not stray from it then the senses become stable so if we know say for example if i know that you know at six o'clock today i it is my duty to actually discuss bashim and Pabatam. so in my mind i'm stable to say that okay at six o'clock i'm not going to do something else i'm not going to go out to do my grocery shopping I'm not going to do something else, not meeting my friends. But at six o'clock, it is my duty to do this. So when you know your specific duty, when a king, especially when a king knows that he is the representative of, a God, of God and has to treat his subjects the best possible way because they are not just his subjects, but they are, they belong to Lord Krishna himself. And the king is just protecting the children of Lord. So that's a big responsibility. So you cannot have your subjects suffer because you do not control your subjects. Although in the material world, it might seem that you're the king, but you do not because you are representing God in protecting the subjects because they are the property of the Lord. And it is your duty as the king to ensure that the subjects receive enough Vedic or enough um, information about the Lord to be able to um, transition very smoothly from the material life back to Godhead. So that is the role of the king. So when the king knows that this is his duty, the king is set in his mind and the mind is stable. But as soon as the Varna system, as soon as people forget what their duties are, their mind becomes unstable. And, you know, they are entangled in doing different things. So you have, you know, one person, you, even though you're a king, you in the previous verses, we saw how uh, the Kshatriyas um, uh, were, uh, were, you know, uh, at Logger uh, were, were following um, business women or administrators who, who or uh, as we see nowadays, politicians, um, where we see a lot of adharma happening. Uh, we see people um, being selfish and doing things not for the benefit of their subjects, but for their own benefits. So this is this is what um, um, the purpose today mentions that this is something which we should really, really not do, um, because um, that actually brings in. Um, 
uh, sinful reactions, not just to the subjects, but also to the king. And we'll come to that a bit more in details later on. Um, we also see, you know, uh, even in Ashram Dharma, um, how it is very, very different, you know, in, we are in, if, if someone is in Brahmachari Ashram, um, we see, you know, stay away from women, all women are your mothers, you know, don't accumulate wealth, don't think about wealth, Krishna will, you know, Krishna will look after you. Um, and then as you come into Kriyashra Ashram, you say, you know, if you're earning money, make sure you save properly so that you can look after your family because it is your dharma to look after the family. Because if you've made it a family, if you've you know, gone into the uh, uh, Griyasha Ashram, you cannot abandon your family. It is your dharma to look after the family. Uh, so if we see, um, sometimes it may seem that, you know, in the in, even in the Ashram dharmas, there are, you know, there are there are rules laid down which are which apparently might um, be quite conflicting, but that means that that actually shows just how much Krishna cares for different parts of the society at different stages of life. So Krishna gives us the free will to engage in uh, to become a brahmachari or remain a brahmachari throughout the life, enter grihastha ashram, you know, or take sannyas. It is entirely up to us and our free will. He has provided us with the dharmic texts to be able to follow life perfectly in whichever way we want to follow life with the ultimate goal of returning to Godhead. Okay, so that's how we see, uh, you know, and um, again, a very quick um, example of, you know, sama, Samanya Dharma, you know, some people you forget Dharma, some people don't even believe in Dharma, they say, um, uh, you know, I don't care what is, you know, who is God, what is Dharma, uh, you know, I have my right and I have my wrong, I know what to do and I, uh, what I have to do and what I don't have to do. And then um, we might want to say, okay, at least if you don't want to follow uh, God, if you if you don't believe in God, at least look after your parents. Okay, do that dharma. And maybe if you look after your parents slowly and slowly, you might want to look after your um, uh, your family. Your you know just uh, not just uh, your immediate family, but your um, uh, second, third, you know, um, uh, or cousins or you know your extended family. And then if you're looking after your big family and extended family, you might want to actually look after your community. You know, you might belong to a community and you might want to look after that whole community, maybe your whole neighborhood and then your whole community. And then maybe that might encourage you to become to look after the whole state. So you see from from just following your own uh, wanting to look after your parents and that is what is defined as Swadharma. And we'll come to that in a minute. So from just engaging in Swadharma, you actually want to look after you. Uh, you can look after the whole state. Okay. You have your Nitya Dharma. Nitya Dharma, some dharmas which you should do every day. You should remember your chanting um, every single day. Or, look, uh, you know, um, something which you need to do, you know, um, any, any kind of offering to the Lord is your Nitya Dharma. Whereas, you know, as opposed to Nimitta Dharma, which is um, done, um, you know, Dharma, which should be followed um, uh, on occasions. Say, for example, uh, if it is um, a yagna, you have to ensure that there is proper fire because, you know, the fire is the mouth of Vishnu and, you know, the offerings are made to Vishnu through the fire. Um, if it is, say, Diwali, your Dharma is to light a lamp. So that's these are occasional, um, you know, instances or duties that you need to do occasionally, nimitta. Okay. So, so there are so many types of dharma. I don't think we will have time to go into all types of dharma. But let's come to um, swadharma, something which is mentioned in our in the verse today. So, what is swadharma? So the word swa. That means own or individual or our individual duty to ensure that the morally right is being done to our own. So we have the Sanatan Dharma, 
the eternal dharma that has been laid down and we have to follow as human beings. But we also have our individual dharma, the swadharma. And the individual dharma is very, very, very important. And um, where we see that Sanatan dharma is eternal and cannot be changed um, with circumstances, place, or time, we see Swadharma can actually change depending on time or circumstances um, or place. Um, so there are, you know, it's different people engage in different duties um, and, um, you know, based on their own circumstances. Um, and it's called Swadharma star, as is mentioned in, in um, Oswadharma, as is mentioned in the verse. Um, and these are the individual's prescribed duties. So whereas we see Sanatan Dharma prescribes the duties of eternal duties, Swadharma prescribes into the individual's particular duties and they can change according to time, place or circumstances. And so we see, you know, uh, one of the main things that the scriptures tell us um, is, uh, and the most important thing is that um, the uh, children should never ever forsake their parents. That is the main swadharma that is uh, mentioned over and over in the scriptures, that it is our duty to look after our children. And we see as we come into Kali Yuk, we see so many instances where people are really giving up their, you know, mother, they're going, you know, they're abandoning their parents, uh, uh, treating them really badly, uh, torturing them uh, at home, you know, physically torturing them at home. It's, uh, it's uh, appalling uh, just how pe people, some people are treated their parents but it says in the shastra that um, you can be the greatest devotee of krishna the absolute greatest devotee of krishna but krishna will abandon you if you do not treat your parents well because um, krishna um, uh, in you know, uh, sanatan dharma says that your parents are your first god Okay, you learn everything they bring you. Had it not been for them, you would not even be in this world. Okay, um, and we see how, in, through many examples, we see um, why, how, and how even the Lord again Himself gives so many examples. We see um, the Lord giving uh, even a demon as Putana giving the status of a mother, because you know the uh, the highest status. Only because Putana in her previous life as um, Ratnabali, uh, King Bali's um, sister, in some places it says King Bali's daughter, in some places it says Ratnabali was his sister. But Ratnabali seeing Varman Dev and his beautiful form, Ratnabali actually wanted to have a child as beautiful as Varman Dev. But when Varman Dev um, uh, destroyed Lord Bali and put his head um, uh, on the third step on Bali Maharaj's head, um, uh, Ratnabali got very angry. And that is when she said, I'm going to kill you. So when we have Putana in her next life, she came as a demon to kill uh, Lord Krishna from his previous, uh, from her previous promise. But because she also had the desire of being a mother, Krishna fulfills that. And that's the highest status that you can give. Okay, so Krishna gives the status of a mother. We see how Krishna even carried, and I've mentioned, I love saying this so many times, Krishna would run after uh, Nanda Maharaj when he used to go out of his house. Krishna would run after Nanda Maharaj carrying his uh, um, slippers on his head. Nanda Maharaj's slippers on his head um, after him. Uh, we see once when um, they were slightly, slightly, you know, um, they were very, very Nanda Maharaj and the Vrajavasis, they were very tired once, but they had to go um, for some festival. Um, they would usually go uh, and travel to Ganga and then come back, but they were quite tired at the time. Um, and then Nanda Maharaj was preparing to go to Ganga with the other Vrajavasis. And then um, Krishna comes up and says, um, Father, what are you doing? Well, you're you're tired. Why you, why aren't you taking rest? And then Nanda Maharaj says, "No, you know, I have to go and um, uh, go to Ganga to bathe, and then you know we have to perform this." And Krishna says, "I can bring Ganga over here." 
in Vrindavan. Um, you know how I brought Ganga to this earth, you know, we, I pierced with my toenail, I pierced the outer um, a covering of this universe. Um, and that is how Ganga, who is called Mandakini in the heavenly planets, that is how she seeped through that crack and came into this earth. Um, Nanda Maharaj looked at him and said, have you eaten? Just go home and take rest. What on earth are you talking about? You know, and Krishna was, nobody believes me in this place. Nobody takes care. You know, I say so many serious things and nobody believes me. I'm just going to go away. But then because he loved his um, parents so much, but that is it, that he was Nanda, he was Nanda Lala in, Vrindavan, in, in, in Vrindavan. Nobody thought of him as, you know, um, the, the, the Supreme Lord. His mother would put, you know, uh, would, would try to protect him from the demons. So, but then we see how Krishna, through his mental power, he brought uh, uh, Ganga to Vrindavan as Manasi Ganga, just because he wanted to help his father and the Vrajwasis. So taking care of parents is the best Swadharma uh, as is written in the in the scriptures. Um, and similarly, the swadharma of a king is to give protection to law-abiding people. Where he sees, you know, he can chastise those who stray from the from the laws, from the ordinances of the scripture, he can chastise those subjects, but the swadharma of a king otherwise is to give protection. Um, because he's the rep, as I mentioned, he's the representative of the Lord. And you see so many examples. You see, you know, Prithu Maharaj later on, we'll come to see, you know, how Prithu Maharaj um, gives protection to, to his subjects. And he calls them as Pitru Vatsala. He calls, uh, he, he treats his subjects as his own children. And we know why, because Prithu Maharaj, does, who was he? He was an incarnation of the Lord. So we can see why he was saying he called the subjects as he has his children, because um, because uh, the Lord, um, we are all the Lord's children. So um, we we should see that the swadharma is not the king should see that the swadharma of a person is not changed. Okay, and any violator of swadharma. Uh, is given a punishment by the king. So when, when Parikshit Maharaj saw that another person was um, chast was uh, beating a cow and a bull, that is not only violating Sanatan Dharma, because uh, you know the cow and the bull are uh, are treated as sacred in Sanatan Dharma, but it was also violating Swadharma because you know, you're know you not supposed to kill our uh, animals. You know, So many people kill animals um, nowadays in Kali Yug, and they do it just for fun, just for their own sense gratification. But that is not how it should be done because that is not the right way to do things. And we also see, you know, sometimes, okay, we see um, that, um, I've got 10 minutes, we see that the subject stray, and it is the duty of the subjects to, uh, uh, the king to bring the subject to, um, uh, you know, to, to chastise the subject, but sometimes even the king might uh, go a bit astray, and we see, um, you know, um, um, you know, one, one of the um, examples we've seen, um, um, King Agba, and who had Akbar and Birbal, you might have heard about Akbar and Birbal. So uh, I'm being very fast because I've only got 10 minutes left. We see how Akbar one day he got up, you know, and he was looking out of his window, waking up in the morning. He looked out of his window um, and um, there was this gardener who was, you know, gardening. And he looked and, and seeing him, Akbar was, you know, he was noticing. And then uh, somehow Akbar was, uh, um, didn't notice that there was something in front of him. Um, and he tripped, he tripped and he hurt his feet very badly and he cut his feet. So uh, his ministers came running. Yes, you know, you for the king, first thing in the morning, the king has cut his feet and there's blood. And the minister said, uh, Maharaj, do you know what? It's all that fault of that gardener. Because you saw him first thing in the morning, that is the reason you cut your feet. 
and the, that gardener should be put to death. So King Angbra said, okay, fine, let that gardener be put to death. And then Birbal came to know about him, Birbal, who was his advisor, and also the moral stick and moral standard. Sometimes he would bring Akbar to, uh, to show the, who would sometimes show the path of morality to Akbar. And we see how Birbal says to Akbar that Maharaj, just as you saw him first thing in the morning, that gardener also saw you first thing in the morning. And look what is happening to that uh, gardener. That gardener was doing his dharma. That gardener was just planting trees. So that gardener was not doing anything else. Whereas you were not doing your dharma. You were looking out of the window. You were not being a king. So that person doing his dharma is now uh, going to have to face death because of you. So whose luck is bad? Your luck or that person's luck? It is that person's luck which is bad, you know. So although he was following Dharma, and that is what we are seeing. So well, uh, in that story, Akbar understood and the man was released. But that is that is what we see in Kali Yuk. We see a lot of people following Dharma, but yet they are being put, they are being punished by the Atharmis, by the non-followers of Dharma. And that is what, as devotees, we have to keep our eyes open for, and not not really, um, uh, not really um, encourage. Um, Bhagavad Gita says in 1848 that one should not give up his occupational prescribed duties, even if they are not always flawless. Okay, so we see that sometimes there is this um, conflict between Swadharma and um, uh, Sanatan Dharma, because, um, you know, um, we have, we see soldiers having to kill people, whereas that's the Sanatan Dharma, because they are, they are, you know, they are saving their countrymen, Arjun had to kill, because, but that was the Dharma, that was, he was doing it for the greater good that he was not doing it for personal reasons. If those Adharmic people had lived on that earth, they would have destroyed the entire universe. So Arjun was being the, um, uh, um, uh, he, he was killing um, uh, the Atharmic people, but they were dead already because Krishna was freeing earth from such Atharmic people. But um, but the soldier, similarly, the soldier, if, if the soldier comes and stays as an individual man in society and kills people, he would go against his Swadharma because, and Sanatan Dharma because you're not supposed to kill a person. Um, we see um, how Dashrat, uh, Lord, uh, King Dashrat, um, he had to give up his children, uh, Lord Ram and Lord Lakshman. They had to go with um, Vishwamitra Muni uh, when they were 16 years old. And Dashrat was heartbreaking, but he chose, uh, he chose Sanatan Dharma, the greater good, um, for um, and 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 he um, sacrificed his swadharma of being a father. I mean, uh, I wouldn't say sacrifice, but he actually followed. He we see, although there is a conflict, he chose the greater dharma. He chose he chose to give up his um, sons to Vishwamitra Muni, who were taking the sons so that the sons could kill some demons. Okay, but uh, had they not killed the demons, the whole story wouldn't have started uh, with the Lanka and Ravan and meeting Sita. So we see so many examples in um, in Shastras where we see the kings, whether it's King Dashrat, whether it's King Parikshit, um, whether it's you know uh, um, uh, King Prithu, they are all following not just Swadharma, but also Sanatan Dharma. But the only clause is, there is only, as the verse says, in the purport says, there is something called upper dharma. And this is the dharma which is prescribed at times of adversity. Now, this dharma is only and only 
to be followed for unforeseen reasons or calamities or crisis. As the purpose says, it should not be, it should, should not be followed at all times, and it should not be taken advantage of, like killing animals in slaughterhouses uh, just for sense gratification. Um, so what is apatama? What are these crises? And these crises, Shastra says, um, this crisis can be of three types. It can be physical crisis, like, you know, some kind of invasion, um, just like, you know, the British invaded many countries and people or the Mughals uh, invaded different countries that invaded India, many of the um, uh, people were forced to change their religion. And by changing religion, they were, you know, forced to eat um, animals or eat cows. Um, but, but these these are physical crises. And, you know, that that is that was um, a, a one off or uh, that is rather um, something extraordinary. Um, it's like, you know, Prabhupada said to his disciples when they went to Russia, um, he said, you know, e even if you don't find any other food, you don't find sattvic food, just have meat because you are there for the greater uh, cause. You are there to preach. So to preach, if you have to suffer, that is fine because then Krishna understands that. And we see even Prabhupada when he was in, New, uh, in, in America, he, he had his food in the same fridge. Uh, he kept it in the same refrigerator where there was lots of meat. So for the greater good, sometimes even dur in, during these crises, you can follow upper dharma. You can follow, you can stray from the dharma prescribed for you. So this is physical apadama. What is the other one? It could be a spiritual uh, crisis, and that can be apadama as well. And what is spiritual crisis? It can be, um, you know, a famine, or it can be drought. And these are all, as as we know, these are adidaivic. These are brought in if you if you do not um, please the gods properly, or you do not serve the gods, or you do not serve Krishna properly. These are these come up um, as as a kind of um, teaching um, the human being how to go back to uh, God consciousness. So these are the spiritual crises that can come, and sometimes during famine or drought, people may. Be, uh, may not be able to follow what they are usually they have to follow they may not uh, you know um offer um flowers or water to krishna first thing in the morning because they don't have that during you know a drought or a famine or an emergency in the country okay um and the last type of apatama is when it is by mistake when there is a crisis because of mistake so this is what is a mistake it is a punishment that can come say for example a punishment that can be given to you um say um you know when indra it displeased gautam rishi by mating with his um uh, with Gautam Rishi's uh, wife uh, Ahalya, um, uh, and that was by Chal. That was that was deliberate. Um, and Gautam Rishi he cursed and gave punishment to Indra. And um, and as a result, uh, you know, um, and Indra was punished many times. One of the times he became a pig. And he was cursed to become a pig and he was happily eating away all the, you know, rubbish that a pig eats. And being a pig, he was following the dharma of a pig. But his original identity is he's the Lord of the heavens. So he was he was not for he was following. That was upper dharma because that was forced due to a mistake, a curse from a guru. So you see, upper dharma, as the verse says, that can you one can. Uh, go astray from one's prescribed dharma only and only if it is un, uh, you know uh, not regular circumstances only and only if it is unnatural circumstances but under natural circumstances one should never ever ever uh, go astray from the dharma prescribed by the scriptures
And that is the reason it brings to a full circle. That is the reason why we see why Dharma is so important and why King Parikshit was so angry, seeing that Shudra dressed as a king, a king who is supposed to be a representative of the Lord, not only that, beating Dharma, which is supposed to be the greatest love of God to mankind. Okay, so we see why that is the reason we see um, this verse talks about um, uh, Swadharma and Apadharma. And as we go through the other verses, we will see uh, more examples of Dharma. So apology and apologies, I'm two minutes over time, uh, but there's just so much to um, talk about. Please do forgive me if I've made any mistakes. Yeah. Hare Krishna, thank you so much, Mataji, for. Uh, giving us uh, all these various dharmas. I know there are many more, as you said, but at least uh, the important ones uh, for us to remember, the Swa and the Sanatan Dharma. And uh, during crisis, um, uh, uh, there, there, there is an exception to the rule. Yeah, so, the Dharma. So are there any questions or comments? I know we have exceeded our time. I think um, we have exhausted our time, so we won't take any questions or comments, uh, and we can take the next time when Mataji comes, if there are any burning ones. Can I request Prashanatma Prabhu to kindly end this session? Are you able to do that, Hare Krishna? Okay, maybe he has challenges. Uh, it's raining over here, so... Hare Krishna, sorry, sorry. Hare Krishna. I have my screen as well. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you so much, Mataji, for the wonderful class, especially on Dharma and on duty. And uh, I'm really getting a very important point in today's class. Uh, that, uh, uh, we should really be dedicated to serving our parents. So I think uh, that's, I think maybe that's the most important point to be. for me. Uh, because, as you say, Mataji, uh, even Krishna can, can refuse you if you don't serve your parents, right? So, uh, yes, I think she it's a matter that she'll be looked into with more detail, with more, uh, um, uh, with more, uh, what can I say? Like, we should really work hard to, to ensure our parents are satisfied and happy. So thank you so much for the wonderful class. Thank you, Prabhuji. Can I just quickly say something over here? You know, I just yes. mentioned just 10 seconds more. Uh, when we say about uh, Dharma towards parents and how the Lord establishes that, even Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, his mother was very, very aggrieved because he was leaving the home as her sannyas, but she requested him to live uh, nearer to Bengal, near in Puri, Jagannath Puri, rather than going to Vrindavan. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Prabhu followed his mother's instructions despite the fact that he had taken sannyas and he shouldn't have any relation with his family uh, family members, but he did not forget his swadharma of looking after his parents. So that is how important uh, looking after parents is in, 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 in Shastra. Sorry, Prabhuji. Yeah. Horrible, horrible. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mataji. It's a wonderful and important point. So thanks so much. Um, I think we all will try to serve our parents better after this discussion today. So thanks so much, Mataji, for the wonderful and enlightening class. As always, I will request all the devotees to please um, unmute and uh, chant Hare Krishna in glorification of our great step, Mataji. Um, please join. Hare Ram all our parents key. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Hare you. Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prashanatma uh, Prabhuji, for ending the session so nicely. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you.
हरे कृष्णा माता जी थैंक यू